Fantastic. What a great morning so far. Um, I just also, can we just give it up for Pastor Sam and the church here? And come on, let's give them a big hand. Isn't this great? I'm feeling equipped and empowered, and I know all of you too. Uh, hopefully you're taking some notes and really taking down kind of what your next action steps are. What is going to be ne my next courageous step? Step. What is it going to mean? What, uh, what prayers do I need to pray? And I'm so excited to be able to just chat with you guys a little bit about, about what's going on in our country and hopefully I have some good questions. You know what I did is I typed in what we were going to talk about and put it in AI to see what the question should be. <laughs> True story. Like, I just wanted to see what would happen. I've been kind of messing around with a little bit to see what's going on. And uh, so it unlocked my doors and drove my car around the, uh, but anyway, true story. I did put in the question just to see what would happen. Real quick, uh, maybe 60 second elevator. How can they engage with your specific role in your ministry? And just, we'll just kind of work down the line and, you know, what you're doing. Just, you know, websites, phone numbers, emails, whatever they can do to connect with you more. Yeah, easy. Faithwins.org, F-A-I-T-H, Faith wins w-i-n-s faithwins.org there's a qr code there there's a sign up for emails we don't have time to bug you but when we come to your state and we start recruiting poll watchers poll workers and we start teaching the stuff uh, biblical citizenship that stephanie mentioned you can sign up you'll get the emails i'm bringing david barton around i think i have 80 something of his days next year we've already contracted for you have so 70 that, excuse me 79 of his days because so, i'm well, taking you got one, one of them yeah okay, absolutely yeah. I, that's right i did promise you one troy <laughs> Um, so we, um, we're set next year. We're going to be extremely aggressive in your state. We're going to connect with people around. We want to do a multi-city, probably four to five days in Pennsylvania, two different trips, picking out cities. And if you want to be invited to that, y'all are the multipliers. We need you. We need you. We can't do this alone. Faith wins, F-A-I-T-H, W-I-N-S dot org. Yeah, I just have my state rep um, Facebook page. You can also find me on the website. If you Google me, I mean, trust me, you'll see a lot of bad stuff with good stuff that the media hates me about. So, um, but yeah, just PA state rep Stephanie Borowitz. Um, I don't know how much else. Brandon last night was like, what's your handle? And I'm like, I don't even know. I, I, need, <laughs> I need to get with the times here more. He goes, I'm going to help you out with that. But good, good. Um, yeah, but PA state rep Stephanie Borowitz. And you can look that up and find all the trolls on there that come on there and yell Thank at you. me. And, you know, it's awesome. Good stuff. <laughs> Well, these guys are doing great work, so make sure you're supporting them. Absolutely. And please be praying for Stephanie. Uh, pray for her, uh, for her courage. It's hard. Uh, pray for more legislators like her. Um, but um, I would encourage you to engage. You know, they say uh, all politics is local politics. Well, we're the state organization. So we're here to work with you, and we need you. Uh, we help you make your voice heard. So go to pafamily.org, and I mentioned our uh, Citizen um, Action Center. You can certainly go there, but just sign up for our weekly newsletters. Uh, it'll inform you. It'll tell you what's happening around the state, what's happening in Harrisburg. Um, we do a lot of granular stuff as well in the counties, uh, in school, school districts as well. And so uh, we, can, we can certainly work together and uh, make our voice heard. Fantastic. You know, I was uh, meeting with, we had a meeting last, uh, maybe two weeks ago with Trump, right down the street in New Jersey, and we were talking about Pennsylvania specifically and the importance of this state and some surrounding counties around here that are extremely important in the next election. And so let's talk about people for a second, because one of the challenges that we had as, as entering into the arena is determining what are good politicians and what are bad politicians. And because a lot of politicians will come in and say, I'm a Christian, and they engage you. And so how do you determine that? How do you navigate those conversations? Because, you know, at our church in, in Charlotte, we had people coming in all the time. When they found out Freedom House Church is involved in the arena, we had all these people come in from city council to uh, legislatures to um, senators uh, on up to, to, you know, Mark Robinson and folks, folks like that were involved. So how do you determine, how would you help, Chad, people yeah. that are maybe pastors sitting in the room, but also, you know, when you talk about voting your morals, what does that look like in picking yeah. people? 
Well, two things. Number one, listen to people like this. They're rock stars in your state. They're going to have a good clue about what people believe in. The number two thing, and I've asked this to politicians. I don't care if they're running for dog catcher or president. Ask them their stance on life. And they'll say, well, here's what they'll say. If they're city council, school board, well, you know, that's just not my area. Oh, yes, it is. Because how you live about life and God's design on the plan and purpose in a life designed in his image determines everything. Remember, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness and liberty don't mean much if you're dead. So if they are wrong on life, guess what? They're going to be wrong on immigration. Can you break that down just a little bit more, Chad? Just break that down a little bit more. So are you just speaking... Specifically about abortion or just... No, about life matters. All lives matter, made in God's image. You know, I tell the media, I'm pro-choice, and I think when the kid turns 18, we should ask them. And that just stuns them. They don't like using that. I say, obviously, every life matters. Let's ask them when they're 18. And they'll say, what about rape and incest and all that? I was with a politician. I probably shouldn't give the names. Somebody run for president's campaign manager was in the room with five of my pastors in Iowa. And I taught them to ask this question. So they go through, this is on the American side, right? And and this is somebody that's with us. I'm pro-life, but. It was five of my pastor buddies in Des Moines with a presidential candidate and and three staffers. One of the staffers starts crying. And the, the person says, well, hey, what's up? You know, we're having this private meeting. Why are you crying? And the lady says, You know, you're pro-life, but don't you know I'm the product of a rape and my mom was 11? Are you saying my life doesn't matter? God moved in that room that day. And so I just never found an instance where it was the baby's fault. And I have friends who have just bled trying to adopt a kid. And there are people in legislative bodies that because they're not pro-life, Because they don't care about God's design. If you get a chance, y'all need to go meet these candidates at every level. Dog catcher, city council, county council. Y'all know how cockroaches do when you put the light on them. They run to the corners and hide. (laughs) You need to expose that. And the best way to expose it is to say, where do you stand on life? And if they start looking at their shoes in the sky, I'm pro-life. But tell me about when it's the baby's fault. But their default's going to be, well, you know, it's just not my area. This is a school board. Oh, yes, it is. If you tell me where you stand on life, I'm a 99.99999% chance. I know where you stand on immigration and tax policy and foreign policy. And you go right down the line and name it. They've got to be pro-life 100% all the time because the baby matters. I 100% agree with that. I actually heard David Barton say that, who I also love. And I've taken that with me from when I heard him say that into every venue that I've been in. I said, where do you stand on life? Because if you can't get life right from conception for an unborn baby, the most innocent human being, uh, then you'll get nothing else right. And it is completely right. And there's an all out assault right now because he's right. Every politician now you say that, oh, well, we can't talk about it now. What? We're winning. God gave us, Charlie Kirk said this, God gave us one of the most miraculous things we would never thought had been possible, which was Roe versus Wade falling off this nation. And and now we want to back up? Now we want to cower back? Talk about cowardice. My gosh, in one year we have 25 states protecting life. In one year. Yeah, I, I would I would add to this. I, I think when we look at candidates, and if they are not pro-life, uh, I think they are disqualified from our vote. Uh, and, and, that, and that really is something that we need to stand strong on. Let me just say this, though. However, we're living in a society that's telling pro-life legislators that the pro-choice message is winning today. And we need legislators like Stephanie and like others who are saying, no, we're going to be courageous like God's calling all of us. We want courageous legislators that are going to stand for the most innocent of our culture because life really matters. And I agree, everything falls apart when you don't care about the sanctity of life. And so that is, I think, still the number one issue. And we should be calling our legislators to it. Very good. You know, it broke my heart when... um, when Roe versus Wade was turned over, and I watched churches not even talk right. about it. Pastors didn't even mention it from the platform. 
And, you know, we have multiple sites, and I'm not a video venue, so I have campus pastors that are each one of our sites. And I said, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to stand up, and the first thing that's going to come out of your mouth is we're going to celebrate life. And I called pastors out. Like, I put them on my Instagram, my social media, and I said, listen, you guys are, are cowards. And in the book of Revelation, it says that one of the things that it's going to inherit hell is a coward. And, and call, no response, of course. They're not going to respond to that. And I, I just, I agree. And I, but I think it's important for us to understand, especially in the church world, because this is a line that was drawn for so many years that you're not allowed to cross, is as we step over it, <clears throat> that we take aggressively these arenas back for the kingdom of God and understand the importance of it. So, yeah, I, I would just add to that. You know, God's given us a gift with the overturn of Roe v. Wade. Yes. What are we going to do with it? This is our state. It's now our decision, right? What are we going to do with this? What, what are we going to do here in this state? Are we going to stand up for the least of these? I was talking, you're talking about pastors. I was meeting with an inner city pastor in Pittsburgh and um, had a great conversation, lunch. We're like agreeing on everything. And then at the end, he dropped this like bomb in the middle of our conversation, he says, but Kurt, I'm never going to talk about it from the pulpit. And I was like, I, I was stunned because up to that point, we were like, he was like, oh, yeah, I'm pro-life. Oh, yeah, I care about uh, marriage. Oh, yeah, I care about gender. All this stuff. We were like in lockstep. And then he drops that bomb. And I said, why wouldn't you talk about it? And he says, because there's people in my congregation who have had abortions or know people who have had abortions, and I don't want them to feel guilty. Yep. Yep. Now, in that moment, I wish I had the foresight to say this. But here's what I would say. I would say if you're not talking about abortion, you're allowing people to carry the weight of sin, and you're not applying the gospel of grace to people who so desperately need it. The, the shame, the weight. And, and, and if you're not willing to talk about sin or a, abortion and also bring the gospel of grace into it, you're doing your people a huge disservice. Yeah. Well, you know, the Bible says in, 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 godly sorrow is what produces repentance, yeah. not godly shame and guilt, because there's no guilt and shame because the sin is removed. But there's nothing wrong with being sorry. No, that, right. that, that, and that's necessary in the process of repentance. Matter of fact, if you don't feel sorry, then you probably haven't really repented about it. That there, so when you're bringing this up and when you're challenging family members about these issues, understand that there is going to be some sorrow. We don't want to, we're not preaching condemnation. There's not, we're not shaming people. We're not pushing them down. We're bringing them to a place that the, their heart is convicted no matter what they've, in any arena, whether it's abortion or homosexuality or same-sex attraction or all of these issues that we're dealing with is we want people to get yeah. to the place where they're sorrowful. When, when Jesus... Um, that woman in John 8 was thrown at his feet. She was sorry. And, but he didn't push her away. He said, hey, just don't do it anymore. You don't have to, do, you don't have to live this way anymore. Right. I'm here for you. Right. So, Chad, what were you going to say? I was going to say, one, thing, one, one reason I got in politics is our side's terrible at messaging. Terrible. And instead of taking the defensive, like, oh, you know, you... You won't let a woman choose. I'm concerned about the baby and the woman, but also I think what we got to do is pivot. We got to learn how to pivot. I've done a bunch of debates against leftists and homosexuals and all this, and they go right at us. And we're not, we don't take enough of a thoughtful pause to pivot and say, you're the extremist, because you got to remember what pro choice means. We're killing a baby. And I said publicly, and I had some people on my side, I was the state party chairman, I said publicly, if I've never voted for a pro-choice person. I've never voted for somebody who would take a, a woman's, a baby's life, unborn, pre-born, out of the womb, and take that life. Never voted. I've written in Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. And I understand the pragmatism. You know, I, I get it. I really do. I, I know maybe we need a federal ban to make sure Illinois and California and New York don't go kill a baby up till birth, or even like what a couple states want to do once they're born. Well, you know, that's inconvenient. Let's let that baby die comfortably because it survived an abortion. That kind of thinking. But we need to get better at messaging. We as Christians do. Certainly the side on our right, our national chairman was on television after 22. Yeah. You know, we got to stop talking about abortion. No, 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 no. Ronna, right. I, I confronted her directly in a meeting with her. Stop saying that. 
we need to take that message back and redefine this. What you're talking about is killing a human being. Don't let them say pro-choice. You're taking a life. And I know that's not where we're headed. But in a bigger sense, our side's got to be smarter about messaging. We've got to be thoughtful Very good. and we've got to be Very smart good. about it. Okay, so that's what we need to talk about. Let me ask you, what are some things that we might need to avoid? Like what are, what are things that we need to kind of that, are, <laughs> that we're being brought into an arena that we need to reach? I, I mean, I'm just curious on your thoughts on that. Well, I think it's exactly uh, what you said about uh, we're really bad at messaging. We're also really bad at showing love. Yes. Honestly, like I, I get really uncomfortable. I know some people have good intentions. But when they're yelling at women walking into an abortion clinic, you're a murderer. And, and shoving pictures in their faces. Uh, listen, that, that, that breaks my heart a little bit. Like, okay, maybe, maybe you think, like, and, and, and some of these things are true, right? But I, I think we have to be able to make sure we're talking about truth and still showing love in doing it. This is what the Bible tells us. Grace, truth, love. Let's be like Christ in our messaging. Let's make sure we're, we're clear. Let's make sure we're showing love. And so I think a lot of times we make mistakes on that so, level. So avoid the anger. Avoid the, the just, just I'm going to just right. pound you on Facebook and you're an idiot and all that stuff. Because yeah, I, mean, I, I hear that all. That's what happens to me yeah. when I stand up for things is they call me, you know, a white supremacist and, you know, all these different yeah. names. So, so avoiding that. Because uh, we need conflict. Conflict is important, Pastor David. And, but the, the point is, is the way in which we can conflict with people needs yes. to be in love. Yeah, I, I, we have to have godly conflict. Yeah. Like we have to make sure the conflict is on the issues and not with the person. And I think also we have to make sure, like, like listen, I'm all, like, I want you all to show up at school board meetings. Listen. However, it matters how you message in those school board meetings. Okay, are you messaging in a way that honors Christ? Sometimes we start fighting like the other side. And we have to be careful. Like, I, listen, I, you know, we need to be in the fight. But we have to make sure we're doing it, uh, honoring and glorifying Stephanie. God. Yeah, I just think, like Stephen, like I said, full of God's grace and yeah. full of God's power. Amen. And so using wisdom, the mind yes. of Christ when you're doing things, God's defended me much better than I could have ever defended myself. Can you like, give us an example of one okay, of those Okay, so when I prayed, like I said, I literally just, I didn't just take it. I just felt like God's going to defend me. I don't need to consistently go out there and say, well, I was doing this. I was, or go out in all the limelight of all this. Yeah. I just defended God's word, stood on what I prayed on, and God defended me. And then what, six months later, the state rep was removed. I mean, you can't write it, like I said. Um, so God defends you, but you really do. You have to have wisdom. You have to be praying. Hey, Lord, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? But sometimes like on those chains on Facebook, yeah, it's good. And sometimes I appreciate those that are defending me when people are saying bad things about me. Like I do smile, you know. Most of the time I just smile at all the hate. Like you got to love it. Like if you can't take bad words said about you now, you're not going to make it where we're headed possibly. Yeah. And hopefully we avoid that by good people standing up and not being afraid of the evil. But if you can't handle bad words said about you right now by people that don't even know male or female, then you better find your spine, you know? Yeah. But it doesn't mean, <laughs> sorry, you know? But it doesn't mean you just lash out, you know? I've had people show up at my office singing, Steph's a hater, bigot, like was dressed up, literally. My poor secretary sitting there like, what is going on? <laughs> You know, she hates the country, and she's singing, and I just laugh. Like, I don't know why it's the way God made me. Um, you know, and there is a time of confrontation when you're speaking truth, when you're speaking God's word. And again, it's not your words. You need to know God's words because that's what's going to take it down. When the devil uh, tempted Jesus, he used the Bible, yep. the scripture, obviously, Jesus' yep. words, the Bible. And so you just, you do have to use wisdom in this. Like he said, you're not like... Like Brandon said last night, you're going to hell. And it's yeah, like, come yeah, on. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, you have a spine. You stand on God's word, truth, and love. Right, yeah. You know, and it's just, it's scary out there. I was talking to someone out back, and they said, well, uh, this guy's my state rep, but he says he's a pastor, but he votes for child mutilation, pro-abortion. And so you really have to have wisdom. Do not trust what people say. 
You know, you have to know their actions. I mean, the Speaker of the House of Pennsylvania says she's a pastor. She's the antithesis of a pastor, okay? She goes against everything God's word stands. So when I got up and said a proclamation of pro-life, a life month in June, so I got up, somehow miraculously, God allowed me to speak it on the floor, even though they would never get it, like, allow that to be voted on. But miraculously, with one of the rules in the state house, I was able to speak that over the floor. And I'm telling you, the, quote, pastor didn't like it. They, they, I quoted and I said, um, may my children and my children's children not know a day that we killed the most innocent among us. Wow. Yeah. Well and she literally, and there was no vote. There's nothing on this. It was just proclaiming it as a yeah. Christian in the state house floor. But then the, the security guy goes, what did you do to her? Because she wow. just started yelling for like 10 minutes. Yeah. They closed the big doors of the house, which are all like these huge wood doors. And they're like, what did you do to that lady? I go, I didn't do anything. It's God's word. It's God's wow. truth. And Fantastic. So, yeah. You know, I think what, what I've been doing lately in our church is really helping people understand the difference between dealing with people and dealing with the demonic. Because there is a big difference, you know, and I think people think I'm being harsh or my wife's being harsh with a person when in reality we're dealing with the the spirit realm. You can't love a demon out of somebody. You can't counsel a demon out of somebody. You, You cast a demon out. And so I think you're spot on, Stephanie. I want to clone you, take you back yes. to North Amen. Carolina. Yes. Amen. And uh, um, Let's but do it. I, I think it, the truth is, is that if there were more people like you in the positions that you carry, um, it would make uh, some of those d- demons get more angry and expose themselves, which is what needs to happen is there's been so much subtlety and so much undergirding and the line's been pushed back so far, and I'm so thankful for you standing up and doing those things. And um, pray for this woman. Amen. Man. I mean, really Amen. pray for this woman. Yes, yes. Chad. You know, I'm, I'm always uh, a little reluctant to promote a book without running it by the pastor, but this is used in Summit Ministries. It's a book called Tactics by J. Warner Wallace, former um, uh, atheist who just checked yeah, it out. Good. And he just goes through how to message and we ought to be strong in here. If we're not convinced, we're never going to be convincing. If we're not persuaded, we're never going to be persuading. But Jay Warner Wallace used the Columbo. Well, how about and learning how to do that? Other thing is, I'll give you an example of what we did in Virginia that, that shows this. So if people are really upset about election integrity, anybody following that camp? So we found 312 churches in Virginia in 2021 to register people. I told them, and we picked 10 house districts out. We're going to run up the score. Just trust me. It's kind of a blue-purple state where a lot of people in the churches had given up. So we registered 77,000 new Christians that voted, and a guy named Yunkin, who prayed in Jesus' name in his own inauguration, won by 63,000. Not because of us. God did all that. But... They started asking me, what can we do? What can we do? So there's 312 churches. We recruited 1,343 poll workers. And I, I wrote a little card, three by five card, and we went into these election offices. We said, we're here to pray for you. We want to pray with you. What can we pray for? How do we help you? And by the way, I know that early voting's taking place. We like a printout of all the new people who voted since last Friday night at midnight. Freak them out. Because of Sunday school classes exposing that stuff, three election officials in three different counties have been arrested in Virginia for cheating. I told them to look for two things. This is real application of what you can do. Look for two things. People over 100 voting, not that they can't, but to your point, let's check it out. Or more than six registered in a household. And uh, they come one day, Chad, we found a house, 17 people registered. What do you think? I said, it's, it's a big house. Why don't y'all run out there? It was a field. That's how we got the first lady uh, indicted and arrested. In Michigan, we found a guy named Jason Daniel. We separated into 100 uh, people of the first 267 had an online obituary. The next week, the Secretary of State of the State of Michigan filed a lawsuit against her own state to keep dead people on the rolls. You can't make this stuff up. We found one guy, and I could tell these stories all day long in every state. A guy named Jason Daniel voted twice in 2020. That's terrible. Jason's birthday flagged him. He was born in 1850. <laughs> Jason could have been a little drummer boy in the war. Christian eyeballs. That's a real application of what we can do and channel our frustration, our anger, whatever, and go do something real. We'll help you out. You know, it's funny to that point. I've heard some people say, well, I can't trust the election process, so I'm just not going to vote. Listen, (laughs) 
Listen, if, if, if you don't vote, then you know your vote's not going to be counted, right? You do know that fact, okay? And yes, we do need to work in some of these areas. But, but really, folks, uh, don't vote because you think that, you know, the election has issues, uh, uh, the process. We, it certainly is. But we know your vote won't be counted if you don't vote. So please vote. All right, Stephanie, two or three things that the, the, in, the, in our country moving forward, you know, I mentioned this last night to the, to the two guys, Pastor David and, and Brandon, about, you know, we're heading into an election year. It's going to get crazy. We know that. And it's already getting crazy with all the indictments and all the stuff that's going on. Um, what are two or three things that churches, uh, members of churches, people can be praying into and that we need to be aware of and discerning in as we move into the next 12 to 14 months? Um, gosh, that is, like Brandon said, a hard question. <clears throat> I would say something that's been on my heart um, since overturning of Roe versus Wade is those three major things in the Supreme Court. And I know that's federal, state is a whole nother ball game with the hate crimes and everything. But we saw, I did a sermon like six months ago um, with Christians Engage, which is a great organization too. And there were three things that really are, are like, like we've put up as idols in that Supreme Court that they're supposed to, first of all, never legislate from the bench already. So Roe versus Wade, Roe versus Wade should have never been there. So seeing that come down, um, you know, I proclaimed that so many times, you know, and I remember one time I said it in front of uh, a colonel and this guy that was really way above anything that I could say or do, but I said, Roe versus Wade's coming down. I didn't know that for sure. I was speaking it by faith. Um, and the guy even stood up after me and said, I don't know about this girl, but, you know, I don't have faith in a Supreme Court. And I said, I don't have faith in a Supreme Court either. I have faith in Jesus Christ. Um, and... The way we saw him flip that court, you know, that wrote, that became a reality. So, you know, proclaiming that, I think it's in letter to, warning to the American church, like proclaiming things that aren't as though they are. Imagine if the church starts proclaiming those things. So, like he said, there's been so many Supreme Court cases that we don't even realize. The Coach Kennedy case that opened yeah, up religious right. liberty that we don't know that could bring prayer back in schools and the Bible back in schools. So, those three things, Bible back in schools and prayer back in schools, because one person took it out, one person can put it back in. Right. Um, that stands up courageously. Um, Roe versus Wade coming down and marriage. Yeah. Marriage. We really could see God do that, but we need the churches. We need me to say, hey, Obergefell is going to fall off this land. Not that we hate people. Not that, you know what I'm saying? We don't hate others. Like you said, full of God's grace and God's power, like I said. But marriage restored yeah. back to male and female because from that comes all the distortion and confusion that we're now seeing with all of this on our kids you know, and like someone said last night, turning into pedophilia, it's sick. Yeah. It's vile. It's all perversion of what God created. And so I would say those three things, state level, different ball game. Hate crime bills coming, religious liberties coming at you fast. I mean, they're shoving stuff down our throats. Gun control. I know most people don't go that route in church. I do because I'm pro-gun, pro-God, pro, you know, pro-life. And I'm telling you, do not ever give up our Second Amendment. Right. Do not give them an inch. I see so... Yeah. yeah, all the gun owners. <laughs> all you have to do, all you have to do is look at Australia. Yeah, and I'm telling you, you never give an inch. So it's another good thing to ask legislators because I have seen Republicans cave to all of these bills yes. because we're going to lose a race, huh? Do you not care about the Second Amendment and the Constitution and our right of self-defense? Go watch David Barton's videos of the biblical right of self-defense and what that looks like. And that in Jeremiah, when they were rebuilding the walls, they didn't even go to the bathroom without their swords. I mean, come on. Yeah. Come on. So I could go on and on. That's state level, federal level. I kind of put them in two buckets. Yeah. But that would be what I would say. And church, please start proclaiming these things. Imagine if the church, like you said, they wouldn't even announce that it was overturned. No. Much less, yes, yeah, proclaiming things that aren't as though they are. And so in the midst of all the evil, in the midst of all this evil that we could be headed down, we're going to see God do miraculous things. Fantastic. Yeah. Hey, we got to finish. We're over oh, two we're minutes. Over. And uh, I, let me just say this. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. That's all I want to say when it comes to elections. Every single vote, every single person you're voting for, make sure you're choosing wisely uh, when, you, uh, when you vote for them. Fantastic. Let's give it up for these guys. Aren't they great?